Stay tuned. More messages are coming up next on Cherish TV. Yes. So, I want us to go straight to the Word of God. And before we read the Bible, there is something that I want us to be aware of. Yes, did I greet you? Let me greet you again in Jesus' name. Yes, I want us to be aware of what we all have, all of us. I know that sometimes we lack this, we are praying for that to come, but there's something special that God has given us that we all have. Tell somebody, say, my friend, you have something. And all of us, we have that particular thing. And that thing is a soul. All of us, we have souls. And there's something that I want us to check today before we open scriptures. Have you realized that in life, we are all given 24 hours, let me say in a day. All of us, me and you today, we have 24 hours to perform our duties, to also please God. Sometimes also we sin within these 24 hours. And at the end of the week, you find that others are more poorer, others are more rich, but we all had enough time, equal time. So it depends on how you use that time that you are given. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. So there's no one who is given 72 hours or 100 hours in a day for that particular person to prosper or to lack. We are all given equal time, 24 hours. And in these 24 hours, it depends depend on you, how you use it. You use it badly, it backfires on you. You, you. you use it rightly, you gain. In a year, let me say all of us, maybe, if it's possible, we can live one full year from January to December. It means all of us, we have how many days in a year? 365. But you find that after that 365, there are those who are more rich. Others they, others, they have more things, many things. And others, we don't have anything. But we were all having equal time. 24 hours in a day, 7 days in a week, 31 days or 32 days or 25 days in a month, 365 days in a year. Even that we have nothing. Tell somebody and say, this year, I have to take stock of my life and check what I have done with 365 days. Because sometimes we blame others for our failures. Sometimes we, we shift the blame to say, if it was not him or her, I was not supposed to be like this. You forgot that you have the name of Jesus that you can use to produce any result that you want to see in your life. So it, it does not go by who you are. It goes by who do you believe. If you believe Jesus, remember this, Jesus is alive. He is alive. So if you believe him, and you use his name, not in vain, you are going to get anything you want this year in Jesus' name. Yes. Anything you want Jesus, this year, you are going to get it in Jesus' name. Yes. Anything you want this year, I'm still hearing the same thing. Cars, 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 cars. Hallelujah. Yes. Let, let's read the scripture. 2 Kings chapter 2. So I'm just glad that Mama is here and they did so. No stress, no failure. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter what? 
from verse 2 to 6. Let's read. Let me just read from verse 1. It says, And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent or keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? So he answered, Yes, I know. Keep quiet. Verse 6. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your weight. That is power, is light, is life unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our topic of today is my soul. Write it down. My soul. The Bible says, where we are reading, that there was a time where God wanted to appoint a new prophet and that prophet by then was Elisha, and there was a great prophet who was Elijah. So Elijah's days were finished, meaning he had to be taken to heaven. But God, because always he wanted his work to carry on, not to stop, he said, if I take my servant Elijah, there should be someone who must replace him. But he must do more or better than what Elijah has done. So the Bible said they were coming from Gilgal, and he asked him, he said, Elisha, my son, stay here because the Lord said, I must go to Bethel, so I don't want you to be troubled by people when we are on this walk of life or in this assignment, because there are many people who will come to you and say, I'm wrong, I'm abusing you, they will also remind you of your careers and everything and your family. So stay here so that you can be safe. And the Bible said, Elisha answered and said, My Lord, as your soul lives, I shall never separate from you. I will follow you. And they went to Bethel together. When they reached at Bethel, he said, My son, did you see the sons of prophets who came when we were in Bethel, they will still discourage you. Stay here now in Jericho because I want to go further with my journey. And he answered again and said, Prophet, I'm saying I'm not leaving you. I want to follow you until to the end of your journey. Hallelujah. So what took my attention when I was reading this is this two prophets, or the son and the father here, they were connected not only spiritually, not because they are all prophets. Even by that time, Elisha was not yet a prophet. He was not yet manifested to be a prophet. He, is, he was supposed, or he was about to manifest. So they were connected with their souls. Tell someone and say, I must be connected to God with my soul. 
The soul is the life of a human being. That's why when someone dies, this body, this flesh, will remain, but the soul is destined somewhere. Hallelujah. So if you can take the soul from the body that you are seeing, it means the body will shrink. It will be finished. So now, normally, we take care of our bodies. We have life covers, insurances, whatever. But we do not cover our souls. And we forget that here we are not forever. Hallelujah. So Elisha had a revelation to say, if I leave Elijah before time, I'll be finished. Tell somebody else, my friend. I want to follow until, until I see something. The Bible says, when they were carrying on like that, this man, Elijah, the reason why he wanted Elisha to stay where he said he must remain is because he was thinking for him to say, there are many discouragements. And at the same time, he was testing him to see if he's worthy to receive the blessing. So he was persistent, and he was also saying, in fact, our connection is in the soul. People might mock me outside, might criticize me, persecute me outside. I won't look at that, and I won't concentrate on that, because I know the one which is inside is the one who is happy, and is the one who will push me to go forward, though he's tough. And that man inside is a soul. So if the soul is taken care of, no more failure in your life. Yes. The problem is we don't take care of our souls. We do anything, anywhere, anyhow, forgetting that the soul is the one that is very important than the body itself. When Jesus was addressing the issue of eating and clothing in the book of Matthew chapter 6, he was saying, do not worry about what you are going to wear, what you are going to eat. Worry that your name is known or your soul is considered by God. Hallelujah. If your name is written in the book of life, you won't care what people say. Tell somebody I say, my friend, from now on, I want my soul to be free. If your soul is free, you will never complain about anything. People will talk. You know, let me tell you something about people. Before you were born, people were talking. When the day you were born, they were talking. Yesterday, they were talking. Today, they are still talking. They are still going to talk even after this day. You will die and leave people talking. You won't stop it. It's up to you to take care of your soul. If you contaminate your soul, it means you are destined to hell. And there are those who are assigned by the enemy just to afflict you so that you can lose concentration, you lose your soul at the same time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But Elisha was not. I mean, he knew that these people who are talking against my destiny, they are not prophets, they are the sons of the prophets. And I cannot concentrate on what they are saying. I'll concentrate on the one that I know he, I have to receive from him. Then after receiving from him, the very same sons of the prophets, they must come and bow to me. Because I know where I'm going. If you know where you are going, you cannot be intimidated by the sons of prophets. You will keep focus. They cannot stop talking. I, I mean, they must even talk louder. To show, to show that you are going somewhere, they must talk louder. So you must take care of your soul. Don't answer. Allow God to answer for you. Because if you answer, these people, they are pumped by evil spirit. They cannot stop. Do you know that someone who is pumped by the evil, evil spirit can talk the whole day? But you will be tired. Keep quiet and let God Almighty talk for you. Take care of your soul. One day your soul will be required. I was reading the book of Luke. The Bible says, it's Jesus who was giving this parable. He said, 
there was a rich man who one day planted in his yard, in his farm. The Bible says, after he planted, there was time for harvest. He harvested plenty. And then, now he does not even have enough storage to keep everything. So he said, I'm going to destroy my storage and build a new one. After building a new one, I will take all my harvest, my crops, and store it. After that, he said to his soul, you soul, it's time for you now to relax, to eat and drink and sin. And the Bible said, after that, God will say to him, you fool, your soul shall be required tonight. Sometimes we gather things for ourselves, forgetting that we must gather things for the kingdom, for our soul to rest. Hallelujah. When you gather everything, it's fine. But remember, your soul must be happy. First, tell somebody, say, my friend, the one in you who must be happy is the soul. Because you can have everything tonight or today. Tonight, your soul can be required. You find that your focus is still on the things that we have put in the storage. Hallelujah. The Bible said, where, you are, where your treasures are, that's where your heart will be. Where your treasures are, that's where your what? Your heart will be. So if your treasures are in the kingdom, that's where your focus will be. You cannot be confused and you cannot be frustrated because you know, if I die now, my soul is safe and I will reach my Jesus and I'm going to see him. Hallelujah. I'm not discouraging people from receiving anything from the Lord. But my concern is we are too much concerned on the things that can perish forgetting our souls. Tell somebody, say, my friend, your soul is important. Tell, tell that person again and say, your soul is important. Do you know that our souls are the ones which are suffering most? And we are the cause. We are the cause of the suffering. Our souls, they do not have peace. You know why? We, we need one, we need two, we need three, up to 1,000. Do you know that when you need everything or you want everything of this world, you'll never finish them? Because if you want a brand new car today, already it's no longer, it's no longer brand new, it's old, because there's a new one that already is in the plan. So you won't finish them. It's better you are content. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said in the book of Proverbs chapter 10, it says, The blessings of the Lord make us rich and add no sorrow. Can I tell you what it means? It means that we must trust God in everything we have. And if you need anything, you must ask from the Lord. Because no one can receive anything except from God. And if, if it's the Lord who is blessing you, it means you will have rest, even if you are rich. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what that scripture means. It does not mean that you must not have anything. Yes, believe God that I want this, but make sure that that blessing comes from Almighty God so that it must not add sorrow. Otherwise, you'll have everything only to find that your soul is not at rest. Tell somebody, say, my friend, I'm going to see God from today. You know, Elisha knew the importance of soul or of his soul. And the first thing that he did was he wanted the true God. That's number one. He said, because I know that I must be connected to Elijah, here I'm going to find the true God. Number second thing is, if you want to be happy in your soul, you must connect yourself to right people. Number three, you must focus on right destiny. Elijah or Elisha knew that his destiny is in the hands of Elijah. Without Elijah, there is nothing he can do. Just how to say, my friend, you cannot stand on your own. You will need someone. 
who must take you to your destiny. But be connected to that person with your soul. Tell the person and say, be connected to that person with your soul. Normally we make commitments and vows with our mouth, but we find that the soul is not allowing it. We just say, I love you. Man of God, I will follow you. Man of God, I will die with you. As Peter, he failed. He was just promising Jesus to say, Jesus, you know that the day you are going to die, I will die with you. So we are going to mix our blood. When they kill you, they must kill me. When they hear you, they must say, Jesus said, Peter, what you are talking about is not going to be possible because I'm the one who know what will happen during that day. Peter was insisting, oh, Jesus, I say I will die with Jesus said, no, it's not going to happen. I know how many times you are going to deny me and the, the witness that day is going to be a chicken. Hallelujah. He said, the moment you hear that chicken crying, you must know that it is finished with you. It means you have failed. You have failed. Sometimes God can allow animals to be our witnesses, to say that we have failed. There was a man called Balak. This man was a king. One day he was intimidated by the Israelites. The Bible said when he saw their multitude, he said, I remember what they did to Amorites. So what must happen here is I must call prophet Balaam to come and curse them. The Bible said he sent people to go to Balaam and say, Balaam, come and curse people because I know anyone that you shall curse, that person becomes a curse and he loses everything. So when he was there listening to the player or the request of Balak, he said to the, the messengers, sleep here and I'm going to hear what God will tell me tonight. Hallelujah. When he was listening to God that night, God said to him, don't go with them because the nation that they are calling you to curse is blessed and no one can curse them. So don't go. And he told them the message in the morning and said, I'm not going to go with you because God said, I must not or I cannot curse anyone who is blessed. They left. And Balak sent more people who are greater with more gifts. When they came there, he said, I'm going to listen to God. But God allowed him because he saw his heart to say, this man is not ready to obey. He said, okay, go with them. The Bible said when he was on the road, he was surprised on sitting on his donkey that it takes him everywhere. The donkey stood still on the road and he could not see what the donkey is seeing. The Bible shows that there was an angel of God that was having the sword in his right hand. And the angel is talking to the donkey and say, this man, you are master because he's disobedient, meaning he does not care about his soul. You must not go where he wants to go. Because here now he's just following the gifts. If you read it in the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 11, the Bible says, there are people who are working in the era of Balaam. All they want is the gift and the reward. And these people, they are doomed already. Hallelujah. They don't care about their soul. They are caring about the gift that they can get, the reward that they can get. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And Jesus said, no. Those kind of people who are only looking at the gift, or looking at the reward, because they are already rewarded on earth, there's no reward from heaven. It means it's finished with them. So the Bible said when he was surprised to say, you donkey, why today you are like changing against me? His, the donkey answered with the man's voice and said, are you not seeing this angel in front of me? Because where you are going, you can even lose your soul. You are going to curse people who are blessed by Almighty God and it will never happen. The Bible said the donkey took him through a passage where there were two wells and scratched him. So this man now is sustaining injuries because of disobedience. Tell somebody, say, my friend, some of your injuries are caused by your disobedience because you don't care about your soul. You are not supposed to sustain injuries now. If you obeyed God, God said, don't go. You said, but I feel for them. But, but, but I have pity for them. God will say, okay, now I'm going to leave you and appear to the donkey. In fact, there, you know what worried me? Is God cannot speak to a tree or an animal. 
Normally, go if you read the book of Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says, after Jesus was tempted and he overcame all his temptation, God sent angels to minister to Jesus, not to minister to the tree or the stones. Hallelujah. But here, God, because he knows and he can see that Balaam now is disobeying him. He does not care about his soul. God said, I won't talk to Balaam. I will send my angel to a donkey. And the donkey must tell him the message. And it's not supposed to be like that. God is supposed to send the angel to speak the message to the human being, not to the animal. It means here this man was lesser than the animal itself. That's why God can ignore him and go to the animal. Tell somebody, say, my friend, I cannot be lesser than an animal. I carry the soul and there's Jesus in me. The Bible says greater is the one who is inside the soul than the one who is on this world. Greater is the one who is inside the soul. Greater is the one inside the soul than the one we are seeing. Tell someone to say, I'm more than conqueror. I cannot fail again because greater is the one in the soul. My soul must be heavy first. I don't care who say what, my soul must be heavy first. Tell three people and say, my friend, my soul comes first. <laughs>